Hi everyone, Ian here. So one thing that's inevitable when you start a YouTube channel is that you end up needing a lot more storage than you might think on your computer. Just the size of my uh, desktop folder alone on my M1 Mac Mini where I edit my videos is greater than the entire disk space of any of my past Intel Macs. We know that Apple charges you handsomely for more storage when you order direct from them for some configs, they're the only seller. You may be looking at, say, the M2 Mac Mini and thinking it'd be quite a cheap solution to getting into the Mac ecosystem, but that 256 drive is tiny. Each SSD upgrade direct from Apple costs $200 or £200, meaning that budget Mac doesn't look quite so budget anymore when you add, a, say, a 2 terabyte drive that would cost $800. And what's even worse at the moment is that with the latest base level M2s is that they sport only a single memory chip, resulted in performance far slower than the previous M1s. Fortunately, there is the option of using ex external enclosures, and this enclosure from Acasis means that you can install any NVMe drive you like and get transfer speeds of 2,700 megabytes a second over USB 4. And this means it outperforms the internal storage of the latest base level M2s from Apple. And this is actually the fastest enclosure that I've ever used, and is replacing um, a much slower Ugreen one that I was using before, which was incredibly slow and it was really frustrating to use. Doing simple things like navigating the file system on it was just timing out and uh, making my life misery. I kind of expected this since it was only 20 quid, but I thought I'd try it anyway. Um, that one works over USB 3.1 Gen 2 with a max speed of 10 gigabits a second or 1250 megabytes a second, uh, though in Blackmagic uh, this test was only getting about 700 megabytes a second. In fact, I couldn't even reformat my drive with it from my Mac, and so I had to resort to using a PC. So I'd definitely stay clear of those cheaper ones if you want something you can rely on. With the Acasis, however, the 40 gigabytes, uh, gigabits a second that it can uh, transfer translates to 5,000 megabytes a second, but the max speed is actually quoted as 2,700 megabytes a second on its product description, making it about five times faster than my previous enclosure. It should be fast too, since it costs about 100 quid more, at $140 or £120. And there's always an offer on these, they, so you can get them a little bit cheaper with a voucher. And I've paired this one with a 4th gen uh, NVMe P5 Plus uh, drive from Crucial, which is 2 terabytes, and that cost me £180. So all in, I've spent about £300 to save £500 on an internal drive. The MV NVMe drive itself is supposedly capable of getting up to 6,600 megabytes a second, but will be limited by the speed of this enclosure, and that does mean it gives me, like having it in an enclosure does mean it gives me the option to reuse the drive or repurpose it in the future into another system or if faster enclosures come out or something I can put it in there as well. But if you're only going to be using it in an enclosure and right now and you only cared about now, um, it's probably worth just getting something cheaper instead like the P3 or P5 drives from Crucial and saving yourself some money. Uh, a two terabyte one of them, let's say a P3, costs uh, £120 at the moment and it's about half the speed, uh, about 3,300 megabytes a second. So it's far more suited to the max speed of this enclosure. It's a really nice enclosure, it's uh, completely aluminium. Um, and it's got a really premium feel to it, so it looks really right at home sat next to a Mac. It comes with a USB 4 cable and all the fittings that you need to install it, though you won't actually need to use any tools to install the drive. And it actually uses uh, thermal pads inside to dissipate heat through the case itself, which means the case does actually get warm, but it's not like it's hot or anything, so it's not hot to the touch, it's just warm. And the enclosure itself is a little bit stiff uh, to open to get into it though that's perhaps a good thing so things don't fall out. It's more than fast enough for all of my editing and storage needs with the added benefit of being a, allowing me to move the drive between machines depending on what I'm working on so I can use it on my M1 MacBook Pro and then I can move back to my M1 Mac Mini if I happen to have to move between uh, locations. And in testing in Blackmagic, I've actually got the max speed quoted, which was 2,700 megabytes a second, meaning that cleaning up my 500 gigabyte desktop only takes me a couple of minutes. And this actually makes it about a fast, faster by about 1,000 megabytes a second than the base level M2 internal drives 
So it's worth considering if you want to trick out your new M2, your base level M2s with a very fast storage. It's worth saying that the larger options, the 512 gig and up, will have fast drives than uh, the base level ones. So I'll be linking both the enclosure and drives I mentioned in the description. Um, be sure to check them out if that's of interest to you. Um, and I'll speak to you soon in the next video. All right, bye for now.